Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create a time tick system. Let's get started. Alright, so a time tick system is an easy way to run game logic periodically, but less often than on update. For example, let's say you are making an RTS where buildings take time to construct or they generate resources after some time. You could do all the timer calculations in each specific object, which would be somewhat wasteful, or just subscribe to a on tick event and store the number of ticks. That way you only have the update timer logic on one object, which helps performance. So in here I have my empty scene, and in my code I have a simple building object class in here. In the constructor it takes a position, it creates a game object, adds a sprite render, gives it a basic sprite, and it spawns a construction bar that we're going to use to display the construction status. The world bar is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab from unitycodemonkey.com. And in my game handler, I am simply spawning a building on zero. So let's see how it looks. Okay, there you go. You see a basic tower sprite and a construction bar. All right, so now on our game handler, let's make a building on mouse click. So let's comment this out and here do a private void update. And if input not get mouse button down, mouse button zero. So on left mouse click, let's make a new building on the mouse position. In order to do that, I'm going to go into the utils class, which is part of the code monkey utilities and get the mouse world position. All right, so let's see if we are spawning buildings on mouse click. Okay, there it is, one building, another, another, and so on. Okay, I can now spawn buildings, good. So now let's make our time tick system. Go into the scripts and make a new C-sharp script, name it time tick system. So in here, let's write our code. First of all, we're going to need a private int for our current tick. We're also going to need to store the time during this tick, so a private float tick timer. And let's also make a timer max, which will be a private const float tick timer max and let's put it at 0.2f. 0.2f equals 200 milliseconds which would mean 5 ticks per second. We're making it const since we want this to be a constant and never change. So on our private void awake let's set the tick to 0 and on private void update let's increase the tick timer by time dot delta time if the tick timer is bigger than tick timer max, then we're going to reduce it by tick timer max, increase the tick. And just for testing, let's go up here, do using code monkey. So we can go down here and do cmdebug.txt popup, which will pop up a text object on the mouse position. And let's say tick and display the current tick. All right, so we are increasing the tick timer by the delta time, which is the amount of time that has passed in this frame. Once it goes over tick timer max, so every 200 milliseconds, we reset the tick timer, we increase the tick, and we make a pop-up just to see what the value it is. Okay, so now we can go back into our scene and make a new game object, and let's name it time tick system, and let's drag the script onto it. All right, so let's test and we should see the pop-ups. Yep, there it is. You can see the pop-ups. We're getting a tick every 200 milliseconds, so five ticks per second. Okay, great. Now let's make an event that will trigger every time the tick increases. Go into our code and we're going to make a public static so we can subscribe to the event from the class name. And it will be an event of type event handler and we're going to call it on tick. The event handler is part of the system namespace. And we want to send the tick as the event arguments. So let's go up here, make a public class on tick event args, which implements event args. And inside, we're simply going to have a public int for our tick. And this event handler will send of the subtype on tick event args. So we can send the current tick. Okay, great. So now down here, when we are increasing the tick, let us fire that event. So if it is different from null, so if we have subscribers to this event, let's send it with this sender and new on tick event args with the tick equals this tick. All right, so the event is set up. When the tick increases, it fires this event so that someone can listen and do something about it. Like for example, let's remove the pop-up from here. 
and we're going to put it on the game handler. So in here, let's subscribe to the event. Go into the time tick system dot on tick. We're going to subscribe. It gets an object sender and a time tick system dot on tick event args. And the on tick event args has the tick inside the on tick event args. So e dot tick in here. All right, so let's test and we should be seeing the exact same thing as before. Yep, there you go. The time tick system is firing off the events. The game handler is capturing it and displaying a pop up. All right, so now let's make the construction code to see the time tick system in action. In the building code in here, let's also receive an int for the ticks to construct. This is the amount of ticks that it takes to construct this object. Let's store it as a variable. So private int build tick and private int build tick max. We're going to set the max to the ticks to construct and the build tick, we're going to set it to zero. Let's also store a boolean while it is in construction. So a private bool is constructing. And in here, let's subscribe to the time tick system on tick. So in here on tick, if we are constructing, so if is constructing, which up here is going to start off by default as true. So if you are constructing, let's increase the build tick was equals one. And here let's test if it is fully constructed. So if build tick is bigger than build tick max, then the building is fully constructed. So let's change is constructing to false. And let's hide the constructing world bar. So let's first store a reference in here constructing world bar. If it is not fully constructed, then the building is still under construction. So we're going to update the world bar. Set the size, which takes a normalized value and normalized value will be the build tick divided by build tick max. Since both of them are integers, let's multiply it by one F. So in here we are calculating a normalized value between build tick and build tick max. We are setting the construction worm bar size and when it is completed, the bar gets hidden and is constructing sets to false. So just for fun, let's also change the sprite whilst it is in construction. All right, so in here I'm simply setting the sprite to a different state based on the percentage that it is being built. So in here, when we construct a building, let's say that it's going to take 30 ticks to construct. So let's see if everything is working fine. All right, the ticks are still increasing, right? I click in there and that one starts constructing. It changes the sprite, changes again, and boom, gets completed, the bar hides and everything is perfect. So I can create multiple, each of them are independent, but the code for the timer is only executing once on the time tick system. All right, great. Everything is working exactly as we want it. Now, depending on your game, there might be some actions you want to perform less often than the actual tick rate. For example, if you're storing stats to display a graph at the end of the game, you probably don't need one data point per tick since each tick is only 200 milliseconds. So for these cases, it's useful to have other less frequent tick events. So on our time tick system, let's make another event in here, call it on tick five. And down here, when we increase the tick, let's do a mod calculation. So if tick mod five equals zero, then we're going to fire the on tick five event. So this tick will fire every time tick is a multiple of five. Mod is the remainder of the division. So when it is zero, it means that tick is a multiple of five. So this will tick on five, 10, 15, and so on. So on our game handler, let's subscribe to the on tick five event and let's say mega tick. 
Okay, so let's test. And there you go, multiple ticks. When it gets to five, you get a mega tick. And we can still construct buildings and everything is still working perfectly fine. So there you have it. We created a time tick system that we can use to run logic less often than on update without having loads of timers scattered throughout our game. This enables you to have time-based logic on any object, even without using mono behavior. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.